Well, hello everyone. Today and on uh, and tomorrow, we are going to conclude our discussion of vitamins with vitamins D and vitamins K, both fat soluble vitamins. So again, you have to watch the dose because they can accumulate in the body. Um, these are two fairly significant vitamins, so I think you're going to find this enjoyable. And remember, once we finish with vitamin K, if you go back and review all of the vitamins, you will know more about vitamins and their functions and their uses than most healthcare practitioners. Okay, let's get started. So as I said, the lecture today is on vitamins D and K. Let's tackle vitamin D first. Vitamin D is also known as calciferol. You can see it there, C-A-L-C-I-F-E-R-O-L. It's actually a steroid and more hormone-like in its activity, not really a true vitamin. It got its name because it was used to treat um, bone deformities of rickets um, in childhood, and um, uh, supplementation with vitamin D reversed the rickets, and so they called it a vitamin, but it's not really a true vitamin. It's more of a hormone. Vitamin D is not required in the diet if there is sufficient sunlight to allow the production of vitamin D from pro-vitamin D in the skin. However, there are inherent problems with this. It used to be okay when we weren't concerned about skin protection factors and skin pigmentation and keratin all blocking the effects of sunlight. And with weather changes, more and more people um, are not producing enough vitamin D and many people are vitamin D deficient. It has been said that in order to produce enough vitamin D via sunlight on the skin, you would have to be playing volleyball on the equator in a bikini, 23 out of 24 hours a day. So we need vitamin D supplementation. Many tissues, including the bone, the heart, the pancreas, and the brain, possess receptors for vitamin D. So again, it's more hormone-like in its action and that there are receptors for this, for this thing called vitamin D um, in all of these tissues. And that means that vitamin D is essential for the functioning of all of these tissues. The primary roles of D, however, are regulation of calcium and phosphorus absorption in the intestine, stimulation of bone mineralization, and regulation of calcium balance. It all has to do with the bone. If you don't have vitamin D, the essential chemical reactions that mineralize the bone and make the bone hard and make the bone strong aren't going to take place. Vitamin D deficiency has been implicated in cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and dementia. And remember, the heart, the pancreas, the bone, and the brain all have vitamin D receptors. And so these receptors are important for preventing these types of chronic diseases. And vitamin D is also important in immune function. All right, now, vitamin D uh, from animal foods occurs in liver, eggs, fatty fish, butter, and fortified foods like milk. Vegetables are very low in vitamin D. But ladies and gentlemen, take it from me. Um, of all the patients I see, 98% of you are vitamin D deficient and you do need vitamin D supplementation. It's very, very important. Primary signs associated with vitamin D deficiency are rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults. Osteomalacia is a uh, disease of the bone where the bone isn't mineralized enough, and so you get, you get fractures. Um, it's called soft bone. Vitamin D levels decline measurably as the season progresses from fall to winter. Of course, there's not as much sun outside, and we don't get uh, as much exposure. But think about it this way. Vitamin D is essential. It is probably one of the most important steroid hormones in the body, and it functions on a cardiovascular level, a brain level, uh, a bone level, and to prevent and treat type 2 diabetes. So that's it for vitamin D. Next uh, lecture, we'll, ha we'll handle vitamin K, and we will be done with our vitamins. Thanks for listening.